In this video, we're going to use ArcGIS Pro to perform a kernel density estimation on a point data set that has an attribute of a catch per unit effort value from some insect trapping. For this analysis, we can see we have two vector files, a polygon of a ranch or a study boundary, and a point data set indicated here in red, and each of those locations was where a fly trap was run and individual flies were collected and the number of flies per unit time was calculated. Our goal is to convert these discrete data into a continuous data set using kernel density estimation so we can look at the concentration of biting flies across this study ranch. Kernel density estimation requires that we provide several key parameters. First, we need a point data set. Here, the red dots, traps, CPUE, and we need to set several parameters about the continuous surface we want to create. First, we need to define a grid cell size. That's user defined. For this example, we're going to use 100 meters. We also have to define the search radius, or how far we want our kernel density estimation to search before calculating that kernel function. To calculate this, we're going to use something defined as HOPT, or the optimum bandwidth. And that, I'll show you the math for in a different video, but it requires that we calculate the standard distance, or a measure of dispersion, of those trap locations, and then use that in a calculation to estimate how far our search radius should extend. We can calculate standard distance in ArcGIS Pro using the standard distance tool, which is in the Spatial Statistics tools. We'll first populate our input feature class, the traps, our output standard distance feature class. I have going directly into a geodatabase, so we can call this traps CPUE. SDIST. This is going to create a new feature class or a new vector file, and the standard distance is going to be a shape file, which is a complete circle. One standard deviation will be left as the default, and in this case, we want to weight those locations by the catch per unit effort value. You can see our lab videos on our YouTube webpage that describe the difference between weighted and unweighted standard difference at another time and the case field is going to be left blank because we only need to calculate standard distance for this one single data set. If this were a categorized point data set, we could calculate on different groups, which would be defined by the case field. And we'll run this analysis. When this test runs successfully, we get a green check mark, and our box is highlighted in green that this has run successfully. And we get the shape file added here, or the feature class added here to our map window. So here's the standard distance, or the measure of dispersion for the trap locations. The HOPT calculation requires two pieces of information. First, it requires the sample size, 42. It requires the standard distance, as calculated in the analysis, to derive HOPT for us. And you can learn about the HOP calculation in greater detail in one of our other videos. Briefly, the HOP is the calculation of 2 divided by 3 times n. That calculation, raised to the 1 4th power, multiplied by the standard distance in map units. These data are in UTMs, so those are meters. And HOP is calculated as 1233.5 meters, or for this analysis, we'll round up to 1234 meters. Let's look quickly at how we can derive those two pieces of information. First, to arrive at the number of uh, samples in the traps from ArcGIS Pro, we can open the table for the attributes of trap CPU, and here at the bottom you can see we have 42 events, so there are 42 trap locations. That corresponds to the n. If we open the attribute table 
for the trap CPUE standard distance, our standard distance value here, 3475.19, is the standard distance that I used in the Excel table you saw moments ago. So those are where we get those two pieces of information to calculate HOPT, which is going to allow us to populate our kernel density estimation. There are several ways to find tools in ArcGIS Pro. First, we could come here and find tools. Here I have kernel density is the first tool that comes up when I start searching that term. Likewise, it's one of the tools built in uh, to the analysis tab in ArcGIS Pro by default. Both of those are going to launch the geoprocessing tool here for kernel density estimation. Now we can populate our kernel density function. First, we're going to need our input, which is the trap CPUE. And in this case, we're not interested in the concentration of the trap locations, but rather the flies that were captured at each trap site. So we're going to populate this with that catch per unit effort value I described at the beginning of the video. Next, we have to define an output location for this. I'm going to call this KDE CPUE as my reminder of what function we're applying this to, the CPUE data. My output cell size is going to be 100, 100 meters by default. That's a user selection. And my search radius is going to come from that table we populated moments ago, 1,234 meters for HOPT. My area units are going to be in square map units. And my output cell values by default will be density. We could also select the expected count. And remember here, the expected count would be the flies per unit effort. We can then click on the Environments tab. We can select that the uh, output coordinate system match the same as the traps. That's our UTM. And we can define a mask. And we can say, mask this kernel density to the output of the ranch. By default, that kernel density, if it runs successfully, again, will complete and be in green. You can read the statistics on that if you're interested when you run it. And the map itself is going to be added uh, automatically. We can see that here in the background. Here, ArcGIS Pro has assigned a default uh, light purple to dark purple color ramp. And we can see very quickly that we have a high concentration of those biting flies captured here in the northeastern portion of the ranch. And across the northern part of the ranch, we also see shades of purple. And then as we move out towards the western and southern part of the ranch, we can see that very, very low or no flies were collected. So there you have it kernel density estimation in ArcGIS Pro. Good luck.